Hello and welcome along to another episode of this FM20 story, The Head Coach with me, Daniel. It's Season 7, Episode 5, and today we're back far earlier than planned. And as you can see, we're nowhere near a match day either. And that's because we've got a unique moment coming up, and you've probably guessed it already. It is a job offer. About a month after we were last here, we have a job offer now, and we'll focus on that a little bit later in the episode. It's probably not quite what you expected, but it is still a job offer, so we've got to treat it with respect, and we'll go and do that in a moment. But first, Firstly, we're going to go and take a look around at Salford. We're also going to reflect on the last episode and a few little issues that carried over from that one. And then, of course, we'll go and have a look at our job offer and see whether it's one we're going to accept or not. But firstly, a massive thank you to everyone who continues to follow the series and support the channel in general. I really do greatly appreciate it, particularly at this time. If you are enjoying it, please do put a thumbs up on it, especially if you're looking forward to the job offer later on. And of course, if you haven't already, subscribe for daily FM20 content. And we've got a few other new series coming on the channel as well, in addition to our two long-term stories. So hopefully plenty of content to keep you entertained over the next few months, where a lot of the country is obviously going to be in lockdown. But firstly, let's address the issue that was carried over from the last episode I asked you what to do about the job offer if we did get offered the Coventry job at the bottom of the championship most of you said stick with Salford and to be honest that's probably the way I was leading and in the end it doesn't actually matter so Coventry didn't offer us the job we had the interview but we didn't ever get the job offer but of course there is another one cropping up now so let's go and have a look at off the pitch for Salford and on it what's been going on recently the finances looking very healthy just sliding down but not particularly quickly at the moment dynamics good everything good off the pitch the schedule shows how good form we've been in so the last six games we did lose in the leasing.com last group game but we still managed to get through to face Rochdale and in the FA Cup we got through at the second attempt with a second round tie coming up this weekend and in the league you can see we're still flying high getting back to winning ways after that Scunthorpe defeat but let's look at the first game it was a 5-2 victory against Exeter a ridiculous performance really it was one all with five minutes to half time Lucas Smith and Labala popped up with quick goals then and then Connor Chaplin with a brace after half time Time, and that got us 5-1 up with just a consolation late on. A 0-0 draw at home to Sutton United. We rested most of our team and it backfired hugely before a 2-0 draw and penalty defeat against Derby. Again, backup team for that game. Most of them really struggled throughout and unfortunately we didn't look like winning the game and we did end up missing a couple of penalties. But then a 3-0 win in the league. Back to our first team, back to victorious ways. Chaplin, Labala and Teller with a goal apiece, making it a comfortable day at the office for us before a 2-1 win in that replay against and Sutton went a lot stronger in that one pretty much first team probably just Keith Milson the keeper coming in Labala and Chaplin with a goal apiece that wrapped up victory there and then the same result yesterday against Oxford United Ben Close and George Grant lay on off the bench he became a hero for the first time this year and that got us up to the top of the league now two points clear ahead of MK Dons three clear of Ipswich and Walsall so things looking very good for Salford City so will we be here to lead them to promotion I'd imagine that's the question you'll be asking after this start to the episode and probably rightly so to be honest so we'll go and have a look at our job offer to see if we're going to accept it and I can confirm it will not have any effect on Salford City because we've been offered an international job for the first time now normally early in these saves if we do rarely get an international offer I'll reject it but on this occasion it's one of the countries I've got blood heritage in so I am part Irish and I've been offered a big international job with them and more importantly we're talking about the head coach realistic we've got to be we can't manage transfers contracts and stuff in. so international jobs are ideal for that sort of thing but also £18,000 a week is Ireland they're a good nation we've got to go for this surely if we go and have a look at how they've been getting on they've got loads of star players but they're all strikers unfortunately they're 40th in the world rankings as it stands but in terms of their recent history they finished second in the World Cup qualifying group Italy's group they were the ones who won it they were second just ahead of Finland Slovakia and Moldova but didn't qualify for the playoffs because they didn't get enough points on the board and they're going to regret some silly points dropped along the way. Away at Slovakia, at home at Slovakia, at home to Finland as well. If they got a couple of wins out of those home games, they probably would have made it, to be honest. Of course, they haven't got the strongest domestic league in the world, but they've got a lot of players playing over in England, ones with dual heritage and the likes. And of course, they've got Shane Duffy, who we managed at Charlton just a year or so ago. In fact, we sold him, I think, under our director of football anyway. He's very experienced and very slow now, but still a good experienced pro to have around. So a good job offer. It won't affect the Salford job. We're going to go Michael O'Neill style for now. He's managing Stoke and Northern Ireland in real life. So we're going to go for Salford and the Republic of Ireland. But a League One manager getting the Ireland job seems a little 
little bit strange, but here we are. We are an international manager. We'll obviously have a quiet start because we didn't qualify for the World Cup, but let's just go through this. We'll go and have a look at some of the stars for the country, anyone we might be able to tempt across from England. So let's go and have a look through at those. But just the basics as we go through for the job offer. £18,000 a week. Unbelievable money. It's life-changing for a manager like us. We've still got Robbie Keane and Andy Reid about. So two former players that can lend their experience. We've not got any games planned until about March now. So that should make things a little bit easier for us. So if we go and have a look at the current squad, we're just going to go through the stars. It'll probably be a slightly shorter episode in truth. And you can see nearly all of the superstars are attackers. So we've got Aaron Connolly at the top. A former Loney at Luton Town in real life. A really good young striker. He's been playing well for Brighton in the Premier League in real life. But a good player and he looks like a proper pro. Adam Idar, he's another striker from Norwich this time a 24 year old. He looks a superstar. Really good attributes. My sort of striker on 90,000 a week. Michael Oberfemi, he was at Southampton. Now a Newcastle player on here. Again a striker but can play right midfield. So we know what his position's going to be. We've got Jason Malumbi, a central midfielder. Again, good young player. 26 years of age. They're all fairly young. So there shouldn't be anyone about here who's not in the next one or two qualifying campaigns. We've got a defensive star in Leo Connor. He's at Atletico Madrid. 25 years of age. Came through at Celtic. Went to Spurs. Now at Atletico Madrid. Really good defensive player he is. Luca Connell, another defensive one. Can play left midfield, centre midfield or left back. Again, a very solid player. Troy Parrott, another striker. Making headlines playing for Ireland in real life. Also getting a game at Spurs due to their injury crisis. Another really good striker. Three or four of those we've got about at the moment and then we get to the more experienced ones a bit further down a couple of youngsters about Luke Murphy's 21 probably the only regen there really good young central defender so there are lots of good signs here I'm quite pleasantly surprised by the standard of this squad I can't lie to you but let's more importantly go and look at the youth squads anyone coming through that might be a star and then we'll also go and have a look to see if there's anyone we can tempt over to the island team a few English players that normally pop over James Collins one in real life he plays for Luton Town we obviously made Managed him on the B to save earlier this year. It doesn't look like the under 21 team or youth teams have got any real stars. So let's go to this national pool. It's something that we're going to have to get used to using. In fact, I don't think we've managed a nation on this channel. This might be the first time we've ever had an international job. So let me know down in the comments. Is it the first time I've had one? How do you think we're going to get on? So what I'm going to try and do and see if there's anyone who's not got Ireland as their first nation. Just an English player there at the moment. No others. One Scottish player at the bottom. So let's go to out in for this we will be allowed to use it because of course there's no saying transfers or contracts here and we just want to see of all of the people available who's English who's Irish who's anything else one Englishman by the looks of it is he someone we could tempt in Ben Wilmot worth 30 million pound an England under 21 international playing for Premier League Brentford let's see if he'll represent a nation shall we we're going to ask him what does he say rejects his future with Ireland wants to commit to England but not against switching in the future so maybe in a year or two if he still hasn't had an England cap we can't rule that out just yet Further down, we've got 19-year-old George Gamble. Looks a good young player, so might be one worth getting across. We'll ask him to represent the nation. He rejects us as well. This is not going well from the start. I haven't done this for about four or five years. We've got Ben Lowry at Luton Town, a youngster, but he's probably not good enough for the squad. So at this stage, we're starting to think, is anyone else good enough? We've got a couple of familiar names there. Callum O'Dowder we had at Luton in our other save as well. I'm sure we had Connor Coventry at Dover in FM18. He's made a bit of a career for himself compared to that. But otherwise, it's not the best start for us. We've not been able to tempt any others across. But a really good squad of players. I'm quite pleasantly surprised by that. We've got lots of good attacking players. We'll have to try and find a formation with two strikers. Try and get them into the game where possible. But for us, we have to focus on the best team rather than the best individuals. So let's just go through the rest of the team. Anyone who can make up a formation. So our best goalkeeper at the moment. Have we got our reports there? We have. So Max O'Leary's rated as the best keeper. He's really solid at Hull, playing first choice in the championship. They've got Kieran O'Hara as well. He's a first choice championship keeper. Any others that were in the national pool there? It doesn't look like there were any big name ones. So if we put them in value order... 
no other goalkeepers that I can see of there. So unfortunately, it does look like they're our best choices at the moment. Oh, hang on. Sean McDermott from Arsenal. 32 years of age. He looks pretty good. Not sure why he's not in the squad to start with. A pretty good keeper, so he might be one we consider. There's another young one in the squad. Gavin Bazunu, that is. He's at Bristol City as a backup keeper. Again, fairly solid across the board. Not our best position, but certainly not a disaster by any means. A right back, we've looked at him. We've looked at Connell, the left back. No real centre-halves of high quality. Jimmy done the best. He's not too bad. Dara Lenihan, but he's getting on a bit as well. Don't forget our next campaign's next year. He'll be 32 at that point. Is there anyone else we can find in terms of centre-halves? Let's go back to our scouting. See if there's any players at central defence. It would have been so good to get Ben Wilmot, of course. Barry Dillon, centre-half and right back for Newcastle. Could well be the future for this nation. But otherwise, good young defender seems to be a problem. So we've got a left back in Ryan Manning. He looks a good player. But central defence is definitely a problem area. We haven't really got any superstars there. So that's the first area we're going to have to come up with something a bit clever. In terms of midfield, hang on a minute. We did have Luke Murphy, didn't we, the centre half. In midfield, we've got Alan Brown, a 30-year-old box-to-box midfielder. Not the best, but I'm sure he'll do a job for us. We've looked at Malumboy. We've also got Cullen in central midfield. Who else have we got? Liam Kelly there. They're all very out average the spine of the team is not great that's something that's immediately springing to mind if we go to the scouting any other central midfielders we might be able to call up Callum O'Hare is a bit more advanced I think same goes for Jack Byrne of Dabberdeen he's a right midfielder but not the greatest to be honest any other central midfield options there I don't think there are this is really worrying. The central midfield and central defensive areas seem to be weaker. Connor Ronan's a good player. That's one we could look at. But otherwise, I'm a little bit concerned here. We're down to the likes of Connor Coventry and again, very average players. So it looks like there's a couple of brilliant areas in the team and a lot of others that leave plenty to be desired, to be honest. Up front, we know we've got superstars galore. On the wings, we know we've got stars. Will Ferry, another left winger. He's a very good player at Aberdeen. Lots of them play in there. So that basically confirms that the likes of Michael Oberfemi, maybe one of those strikers who can play off the left, the likes of Connolly and Parrott, one of those will have to go out there. We need to make sure we protect the wings. Luke O'Connell could go forward, but then what do we do at left back? It's just so many problem areas. Some really good ones and some problem ones. I can see why they conceded goals against poor sides. In terms of the under 21s, there's no real youngsters coming through. Again, other than attacking players. They're all forward thinking. There's no real defenders in Ireland. What on earth's going on? What happened to the likes of John O'Shea and Richard Dunn? All of those not been replaced. And it seems like we're going to have a problem here. So we probably should have done our research before accepting this job. But life-changing amounts of money won't affect our current promotion charge with Salford. So we're going to try and get on with both jobs at the same time. But of course, Ireland isn't going to be a focus until March now, where the Euro Nations League and the European qualifier start. So we've got a little while before we have to think about any of that stuff. So for now, we will be getting back to Salford City, getting back to our promotion charge. We're top of League One. Everything's going very well in that sense. Just a couple of little injuries that are getting us off course. But with an FA Cup game and in a week's break, I'm sure we'll be all right for those lads to recover. Connor Chaplin banging in the goals for fun. Ben Close average rating still can continues to rise. Nathan Teller popping up with assists and loads of others contributing as well. Everything's going really well at Salford. That's the main thing. If we can rise our stock there, we might even get a big club offer now. I'd imagine the Ireland job's going to really improve our reputation. It already has. Straight up to two star. We've obviously got the licenses improving. If we do a good job with Ireland, this could be our springboard to the top of Europe. Not only will it make us reputation grow, it will also raise awareness to other European countries that we just wouldn't have been able to do with Salford. So I'm really excited excited about what this could bring. I'm really hoping we can make a success of it with Ireland, but we're going to have to think very cleverly about tactics, but luckily I've got four months to do so. But certainly an interesting episode, a unique one if not the most action-packed. We've got an international job for the first time ever in this series. The channel makes its debut in international management, and it's a country that's of course dear to my heart, so it will be a very interesting tale for us, and I really hope we can do well with them. But back to Salford, we'll be back in a little while's time. I'll probably extend the plan for the next episode, so let's have a look at how we're getting along we'll probably come back towards the end of January so maybe around the Ipswich game for the end of the window it's a top of the table clash and we'll see what our director of football's doing on transfer deadline day that could turn into a massive action-packed episode but for now a massive thank you for watching this one if you did enjoy seeing us get our first big international offer please do put a thumbs up on the video it's not what I expected and I'm sure it's not what you expected either but let me know if you think
think we can make a success of it. If you've got any tactic suggestions, let me know. I'm going to desperately tempt Wilmot to come and play for us. Because otherwise, we are so short defensively. And we might have to play four up front and just hope for the best. Let me know also if you think we can sustain our promotion push. And what you think our director of football will be doing in January. It's still Chris Casper, so we'll come and see the glories he's got entailed for us. That'll be at the end of January, as well as the Ipswich game. If you're looking forward to all that and you haven't already, please subscribe for daily FM20 content. We've got our two long-term story. The Dorkin Wanderers one's flying now as well. I'm really enjoying both of them at the moment. Of course, you always enjoy them more when they're relatively successful, rather than when you're worrying about the threat from the sack. And we'll also have more from FM20 Fantasy Draft collaborations on the channel. Let me know if you want to be a part of that series. And there's a couple of other plans I've got in place as well. Maybe FM20 Mobile, a couple of things from the real football world too. So keep your eyes peeled for those as well. And we might even have the return of Cricket 19. I'm not going to promise just yet, but it's looking possible that may happen. So those of you that have been looking forward to that series, that one may be back soon too. And finally, for real football content from the past few months, catch up with our football podcast in the eye above. There's match day vlogs and links to all the other series as well, so please do go and check those out too. But a massive thanks for watching this one and your continued support of the channel as always. I really do appreciate you continuing to watch and hopefully I'll see you next time for another big episode as we've got Transfer Deadline Day by our director of football and a big top of the table clash against Ipswich. Switch. <laughs>